artistic tombstones. Almanac is coming your way next. A dollhouse hasn't caused a cure for a very... Henrik Ibsen wrote his famed play back in 1879. This dollhouse in St. Paul on the piece of land where the state of Minnesota is building its new revenue building. And that's the problem. Historic preservationists say the 1858 structure is the last of the small homes built in St. Paul's first downtown neighborhood. State officials say the rundown building has no future use and should be torn down. Tonight we'll try to discover if there is any middle ground. Tom Blank is an architect who has consulted on the issue for the Capital Area Architectural Planning Board. Also with us is Jim Sasevich, who is a local St. Paul historian who specializes in researching old homes. Well, you know what, Jim, I'm going to start with you first. Why should anyone care? You saw the pictures there. Why should anyone care about this dumpy little old house? Well, first of all, I think everybody should realize uh, that uh, our housing stock from that period is really, really rare. Our oldest structure in St. Paul dates from 1850. Our uh, oldest house in Minneapolis from 1849. The dollhouse is actually one of the 12 oldest structures in our entire city of St. Paul and dates from the year of Minnesota statehood. It's a well-preserved example and uh, a rare in, in, its, uh, in its entirety. Tom, you're a preservationist. Why are you picking on the poor dollhouse here? Well, I I don't argue with what uh, Jim says about the building, but he, f he fails to tell us what to do with it. It's, uh, there isn't an apparent use for it. Can it be integrated into the structure of the new revenue building somehow? No, uh, they're quite incompatible. The, one of the beauties of the dollhouse is that it has a context, or it had a context, and that's one of the historical uh, features of the building, was that it uh, represented a kind of uh, community, and that is all gone. The, the entire environment the, has We changed. have some pictures, by the way, to show it, too. Go ahead, Jim, while we're showing the pictures. Well, the, the context of the dollhouse is, is the fact that it's, it's, uh, it's sitting as part of the, really, the last remnant of the lower town neighborhood. You're seeing that on the screen right now. There's the dollhouse with our state capital in the background, our first state capital, and the house sits exactly where it was built 140 years ago. There's the state capital building built in 1853. Again, the last remnant of that neighborhood, we, this was our first neighborhood. This is what the house looked like uh, before they started all the construction around it. And it sits at a, as an island now, but actually is in a site that would be the courtyard of the new revenue building, actually in the courtyard. So as far as the, the context, the building could actually remain where it is today and, and not be a real problem. Yeah, but, but, it it be? but it loses its historic context in that it was designed to have a little, as your model shows here, it was designed to have a fence and a garden garden, and uh, it was essentially a, a very small town home, the day, I mean, a home for a small town when it was built, and, and it, if it has a five-story building surrounding it, the context is totally different. This, yeah. is, this is how the house would look like restored, and, and the context and the drama of this is to be able to walk up to this little building for whatever use it's, it's going to be used at, and, and walk up and see this building, the taxpayer's homestead, the masses, the home of the masses, the common man, and it's got a great women's history as well. Well, and so it, it's an important building. But you bring up something interesting, Jim. For whatever use it might be intended for, well, and actually, you know, Tom brought this up. What could you use this little building for? A actually, there's many uses already. In in the early 1970s, when the state acquired the building, they used it as office space, and it makes a great little office. The ombudsman for corrections was in there for four years. They loved the building. Uh, the revenue department actually suggested that they were going to distribute forms from the building or use it for conference room space. Uh, I think the state. Of Minnesota should take the leadership role, find a use for the building. The 1976 Preservation Act uh, not only empowered them to preserve structures like this, but also required them to preserve these types you know, of buildings. Jim is appealing to our better nature here, Tom. <laughs> I mean, you know, and you know that too, uh, but is it just cost ineffective to do this or it's just unesthetic or what are some of the barriers to doing some of this? Well I think there's a great lack of enthusiasm on the part of a lot of people to do anything with this particular building. I don't argue the historic character of the building. It has a story to tell. That story can be told by documenting it, by uh, extremely careful uh, either removing of the building uh, to another site and an analysis of its site and uh, uh, you know make a, a, a historic study of how, how it was built and, and in 
fact, we would learn more about it by uh, taking the building apart and studying it and moving it to another location than, than we would by leaving it and preserving it on that spot. A great is it, deal is it expensive, design. by the way, to move it to, his, to another location? It's very expensive to renovate this building. There's about 15 to 20 percent of the original fabric still there. So that this is a building that has to be reconstructed. This is a building that's ready for autopsy. Yeah. A, a, a true preservationist, a true preservationist looks at himself as a, as a healer, a, 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 like a doctor. And a, and a doctor doesn't take an x-ray or take a blood sample and then discard the patient. This is not a cadaver we're talking about. This is a, a building that has a long life ahead of it. If someone in the state of Minnesota would take the leadership to find a use for it, and, and uh, uh, the funding for the building has been exaggerated, the funding for restoration of the building has been exaggerated, into the $500,000 figure. We have competent restoration uh, architects and contractors that have looked at the building said it could be easily restored for less than $100,000. Do you object to having it moved? Uh, I object to having it moved because there's absolutely no reason to move this building, and it certainly doesn't belong in any other context than in the Lower Town neighborhood where it was built 140 okay. years ago. Well, where does this stand then, uh, Tom, with the process of the cap board process and all that has to be done yet? Well, the cap board has gone on record uh, on various occasions of wanting to see that preserved on its site, uh, has, and it's also gone on record with the uh, opinion that it could easily be moved off of its site, that, uh, that understanding the history and the story that the building has to tell has little to do with whether the building is even there or whether it's on that site. It has to do with some serious uh, scientific research into the history of the building. When will a decision be made? I don't know. Um, well, the comment period ends on Wednesday yes. of next week, correct? Yes. Okay. Tom, and it's all in the hands of the Department of Tom, Administration. What you, and, and what, you fail, what you fail to mention is that the house has been studied for 20 years. Yes. Every single study has underlined the fact that the building should remain there and should be incorporated into any building that is built on that site. And that is every study, including the 1992 study funded by the state of Minnesota, saying the building should remain there. And, and that is what everybody was going on until well, recently. That's a so, selective so. reading of parts of those reports. You guys are both good. I'm torn on <laughs> this myself. Oh, Thanks a lot. Happens. I'm glad you came down. Appreciate Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.